The latest sci-fi film starring Marvel's Falcon is now online. A battle between humans and monsters is about to unfold. Three years ago, a sinkhole suddenly appeared. Creatures crawled out from within, destroying human civilization. Only by hiding at an altitude of 8,000 feet, could they avoid the monster's attacks? Now, three years have passed. A group of survivors has taken refuge in the Rocky Mountains. There are fewer than 200 people in the canyon shelter. Single father will does his best to care for his child. But for his young son, he is the only child here. The mountaintop feels like a prison. However, if people cross the 8,000-foot barrier, they will be attacked by monsters. A white line is drawn on the mountain to remind survivors not to take risks. Will was startled awake by gunshots in the early morning. He walked to the window to check. It turned out. The crazy woman next door was practicing shooting again. Will lay on the sofa reminiscing about his wife. Suddenly, he heard sobbing coming from the bedroom. He rushed in to help his son change the filter. His son Hunter was sick. Will knew in his heart. He had to go down the mountain to search for enough medical supplies. However, today was Hunter's birthday. Will first went to the only supermarket on the mountain. He exchanged a box of macaroni with a battery. Hunter was very happy, but he noticed that his father had turned off the radio. Will explained that they needed to conserve power, because the days are short and the nights are long in winter. If necessary, we can use flags to notify other shelters. You're gonna leave, aren't you? That was your last filter. We need more. Will could only comfort Hunter, that he would protect himself and return safely. Not long after, his friend Katie arrived with some drinks. They drank while reminiscing about their normal lives three years ago. Meanwhile, the crazy woman next door was still practicing shooting. After sending Katie away, he began to plan his route. Unexpectedly, Hunter began to have breathing difficulties again. But there were no filters left in the house. He could only give Hunter an injection of medication. Once his son calmed down, Will went next door to find the crazy woman Nina. She wasn't really crazy. Nina was a physicist, even though the government had stated that bullets couldn't kill the monsters. But Nina had been researching ways to deal with them. Will said he was going down the mountain tomorrow. He was heading to the hospital in Boulder to find filters. If he didn't go, Hunter would die. And Nina was the only one who had gone down the mountain and lived to come back. So Will needed her help. But Nina insisted that his survival was just luck. And she wouldn't accompany Will on the risky journey. Will could only say in response, Last year, you thought you found a way to kill the monsters. You need to return to your previous laboratory. It was my wife Tara who went down with you, disregarding the danger. Now I have a safe route to Boulder. I just need to go below the boundary two times. Moreover, Will's former company was involved in the construction of the Calvary Mine. He is familiar with the layout of those tunnels and can successfully cross the mountains. Then Will stated that they would meet at the Cathedral Viewpoint at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you change your mind, come find me. In fact, Will indeed struck a nerve with Nina. She had always cared about Tara's sacrifice. The shadow of that day had never left Nina. On the other side, Will left his son in the care of a neighbor. Then he went to get some weapons for protection. Katie was furious when she heard the news. She didn't expect that Will planned to act without telling her. Katie had already lost a friend Tara, and she wouldn't let Will take risks alone again. No matter what, she insisted on going with him. Besides, no one can hide on the mountain forever. This battle would come sooner or later. In the end, Will, Katie, and Nina formed an expedition team. They planned to go to the Alta Ski Resort first, where there was a backup generator. Even though it had been idle for over 900 days, if they were lucky, they might be able to start the ski lift. Nina used bioelectromagnetics to create a device similar to a compass that could sense the magnetic field after monsters appeared. As long as they appeared within half a mile, the needle would indicate the direction of the monsters. The three quickly approached the 8,000-foot boundary. There were still two miles to the ski resort. If they went through the forest, it would only take a mile. Nina observed that the magnetic field pointer was very stable. She led the two across the boundary. They quickly saw several abandoned cars. Will searched and found some ammunition, and even a grenade launcher. Nina squatted by one of the cars. She was studying something unknown. Katie couldn't stand her arrogant demeanor. The two were at odds and almost got into a fight. Will quickly pulled Katie away. This journey was destined to be anything but calm. The three continued to cross the woods. Along the way, they saw a herd of wild horses, without human interference. The animals were indeed happy. Not long after, 
They arrived at the ski resort at 7,620 feet. They only needed to hike for another 10 to 15 minutes to reach the safe zone at the highest point. But at this moment, the magnetic field was fluctuating. They had to move faster. As soon as the words left his mouth, a flash of fire appeared in the distance. There was no time to hike now. The three decided to take the risk and try the cable. Nina and Katie raised their weapons to cover Will. Will climbed up to activate the backup power. The monsters were getting closer and closer. Katie immediately fired a grenade. The massive force was enough to topple trees, but it couldn't kill the monsters. It could only hinder their speed. In a critical moment, Will finally activated the power. Nina quickly flipped the switch and pulled Will onto the ski lift. Katie ran to the vertical ladder. She climbed up as fast as she could. In the meantime, Will kept shooting to cover her movements. The ski lift quickly approached Katie. Will urged her to jump quickly. Go, 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 jump! Come on! Will grabbed Katie. The 8,000-foot boundary was close at hand. The cable snapped due to the monster's destruction. The three fell to the ground one after another. They got up and rushed forward. The three finally entered the safe zone at the last second. The monsters had no choice but to retreat. In the evening, they rested at the ski resort. It was very safe here at an altitude of 8,209 feet. Katie was still trying to process everything. After all, she had been hiding on the mountain for years. This was her first time facing the monsters up close. And these creatures had wiped out 95% of the world's population in a month. What's more terrifying is that throughout history, all top predators kill only to fill their stomachs. They have times to sleep and rest, or times when they're full and don't want to move. But the monsters down the mountain are different. They neither eat nor sleep. They exist solely to slaughter humans. They are like killing machines born to exterminate us. The next day, the three arrived at the entrance of the mine. Nina voiced her concerns. By the time they exited the mine, it would be dark. We can't move at night. Will stated that there was a ranger station near the exit. They could spend the night inside. They just needed to pass through the tunnel on line 8. And exit at the other side at 8,032 feet. Then they could continue west. And they would reach the Boulder Hospital. But Nina wasn't easily fooled. The tunnel had to pass through the mountain. It couldn't be a straight line. So there must be sections that fall below the boundary. Well, for how long? 231 yards. <laughs> What? Although both ends of the tunnel are above 8,000 feet, but these tunnels are not sealed. There could be monsters inside, and Nina's magnetic field compass can't function under a mile of rock. However, the monsters not only have night vision, but they can also detect the carbon dioxide we exhale and gather in response immediately. Now, the main characters can only move forward and pray that there are no cracks in the tunnel or paths leading to the lower levels of the mine. Unexpectedly, things were worse than they had imagined. The Line 8 route that Will had planned was blocked. They had to take the risk and enter Line 7. And this route is about a thousand yards below the boundary. Will absolutely wouldn't back down. After finding the tunnel, he prepared to enter Line 7. The narrow vertical ladder seemed bottomless. Will believed that after landing, they couldn't rush past, as it would create too much noise, and the carbon dioxide emissions would increase fourfold, which would also consume a lot of energy. So even though they were scared, they had to slow down. The three of them crawled into the shaft and reached line 7. Katie quickly heard a strange sound. She thought she was just being overly sensitive. Will told Katie to cover the headlamp. They saw a red light not far away. They immediately ran away. No one expected that a monster would be right there. When they landed, fortunately, there was an excavator in the middle of the tunnel, blocking the monsters for the time being. Will fired several shots at its head. Then he and Nina ducked into a narrow crevice. They fired at the monsters pushing their way in. However, this was just a waste of ammunition. Nina ordered the two to turn off the headlamps and hold their breath, not to exhale carbon dioxide. A monster probed with a tentacle, perhaps curious about why the signal had disappeared. Nina was reaching her limit. Will quickly pulled out a flare and threw it. As the three gasped for breath, they discovered an exit on one side of the narrow crevice. They moved the rocks and crawled inside. Will was in charge of covering them from behind. Nina turned around and pulled him in while Katie had already climbed out. Katie became the first casualty. Will hurried out to save her, but he could only watch as Katie was dragged away by the monster. Clearly, this tunnel was not a way out either. Fortunately, they still had other options. Nina spotted a ladder leading to line 8. The two climbed desperately upward. They reached a temporary rest area halfway up the mountain. Soon after, they successfully exited the tunnel. They arrived at the ranger station before sunset. 
There was a ranger's vehicle parked at the entrance. If they could find a new battery to replace it, the vehicle might still work. The two rummaged through the ranger station. Will saw a few boxes of macaroni. He couldn't help but think of Hunter back on the mountain. He vented to Nina. I made a thousand boxes of macaroni before the disaster. Every night, Tara would ask Hunter what he wanted to eat. That kid always said mac and cheese. The milk protein and cheese, it's like an opioid, as addictive as morphine. Nina's sensory cells had probably all died out. Hunter asked her what did your lab have, and why did you want to go back for it? Nina explained that it was a cubic magnesium oxide called magnesite. She believed that the monster's scales couldn't penetrate it, because it was electrified. If a shell or a bullet could bond with magnesite, it could create an explosive moment, generating a differential of a million volts, causing an uncontrollable internal combustion phenomenon. Of course, this was just a hypothesis. Tara and the others lost their lives because of hypothesis. Now Will did the same thing to Katie. He caused his best friend to die tragically. Their feelings were very complicated. The next day, they set off in the ranger's vehicle. Will drove across the boundary. He reached the hospital in the fastest time. Will was familiar with the layout here. He immediately took Nina to the fifth floor. The hospital was dilapidated and dimly lit. The sounds of monsters were gradually getting closer. But Will didn't find the filter. Nina nervously watched the magnetic field compass. At this moment, Will finally found the filter in a cabinet. The two immediately ran downstairs. Unexpectedly, several tentacles pierced through the wall instantly. They escaped down the corridor. Will hadn't had a chance to catch his breath. When he was wrapped up by an extending tentacle, Nina pulled out a fire axe. She swung hard to chop through the tentacle. Then Nina yanked the pull ring of the decontamination room. She attempted to use the smoke to confuse the monster. Will caught sight of several gas canisters. He signaled for Nina to find good cover. Then Will aimed ahead. The two weren't sure if the creature was dead. They decided to leave the hospital first. However, the two quickly had a disagreement. Nina still wanted to go to the lab to get the magnesite. She didn't want to miss such a good opportunity, but Will couldn't risk his son's life. If they died on the way to the lab, they wouldn't be able to bring the filter back to the mountaintop. Nina replied to him, Do you think these filters will last long? Six months? Or a year? Unless we find a way to completely eliminate the monsters, and tell the world we can defeat them, your son will never be safe. In the end, Will was persuaded by Nina. Just as they left, the monster that had fallen down woke up. The two protagonists quickly arrived at the Boulder National Laboratory. Fortunately, the magnetic field compass was quiet for now. Nina needed five minutes. Will patrolled the area with his weapon. He saw Nina's office. Inside, there was actually a family photo. The family of four smiled happily. Nina was working in the lab when the disaster struck. Although it was a day off, the team had made a breakthrough. They could use cobalt to increase the electron flow in the batteries, tripling the efficiency. She had to leave her child behind to work overtime in the lab. Nina never expected this would be a final farewell. After the incident, Nina armed herself with indifference. She spared no effort in researching ways to fight the monsters, because she knew that anger was more useful than sadness. At this moment, the bullets coated with magnesite had cooled down. Nina shot at a piece of the monster's armor, but the effect was not ideal. She told Will to go back and find his son first. Nina would stay behind to continue her research. If she could succeed, Nina would immediately drive to meet Will. If she failed, at least she would have tried. It would be meaningless for both of them to die here. Will really couldn't gamble his son's life. So he drove away in the ranger's vehicle. While Nina stayed behind to keep trying, the needle on her wrist was spinning wildly. At this moment, she noticed the battery she had developed. An idea suddenly rushed into Nina's mind. She took the high-purity cobalt off the shelf and mixed it with the magnesite. Then she coated the bullets with the mixture. Nina fired a shot at the approaching monster. On the other side, Will's tire malfunctioned. The vehicle hit a rock and flipped over. He lost consciousness for a moment but quickly regained it. Will kicked out the windshield and escaped the cab. While the monster's roar was closing in, Will grabbed his backpack and weapon and ran uphill. As the monster chased through the woods after him, death was closing in. Will finally reached near the boundary line, but he was blocked by another monster. Now Will was in danger both in front and behind. Monsters were gathering all around him. Will felt despair. Nina fired several shots, taking down several giant monsters around her. It was clear that her experiment had succeeded. The two approached the monster's remains to examine them. It turned out to be a mechanical monster. 
No wonder it didn't need to eat food. Mechanical monsters can't go above 8,000 meters, due to programming limitations. By who? This thing has almost wiped out humanity. It couldn't possibly have been made by us. The only thing Nina could think of was aliens. Soon after, the two safely arrived at the shelter. Hunter joyfully leaped into his father's arms. Nina immediately raised the pirate flag, to notify all nearby bases. We have found a way to deal with the monsters. Everyone shared the formula via radio. People began to unite and fight side by side. The mountains stretched for miles as explosions echoed. One day, they would reclaim their homeland. The film ends here. It is essentially a different version of a quiet place, using altitude limits as a plot device. The rest of the plot is fundamentally the same with different content. With a formula, thousands of similar scripts could be written. The only commendable aspect is, the magnificent natural scenery of the Rocky Mountains, which serves as the most stunning natural backdrop. The steep peaks contrast beautifully with the blue sky, as huge mechanical monsters roam the mountains, which looks quite harmonious. The film's ending features the male and female leads, looking through binoculars at an extraterrestrial object, hinting at the origin of the mechanical beasts. It seems there will be a sequel. If you enjoy my channel, please click subscribe.